Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Dating, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. She cheated on me twice and I miss my cheating ex and her family, but I know I shouldn't. Me, 28M, and my GF, 26. So we started the relationship in May 2017. I had gut feelings two months into the relationship that she didn't seem, like she was entirely into the relationship. I had suspicions from how private she told me she was about introducing people to her family and how secretive she was with her phone. She never shared any pics of us on her egg account and took so long for her to finally share pics of us on her FB slash say we were official. I near had to beg for her to show us off. But after a Thanksgiving event with her family, while she was I saw her phone keep going off, she always kept him on silent. I check it because in the beginning of the relationship we agreed to sharing passcodes. Remember that part? I see someone texting her via snap. I check, and it's some guy asking how her day is going and he misses her. I asked her who it was, and she said, just a friend. I tucked the convo away for later. A couple days after that event, she's sleeping over at my place, and early in the ember phone goes off, light on the phone. I look at it, and it's the same guy. I open the phone to see it's the friend. I open her phone via her passcode. I see they've been talking for many months. They sparingly talk throughout every day. He slips in some talk about how he misses her body, asks about her, and I and also says how he wants to see her again after seeing her recently apparently. I took screenshots of their conversation, and then I woke her up and confronted her. She immediately gets defensive and is mad about how I went into her phone and invaded her privacy. I tell her I can't invade someone's privacy when she gave me her passcode. I ask her who he is and how I've had suspicions from how she's been acting. She kept denying about who he was calling him, just a friend until I told her to stop lying. She tells me that they used to date and had but it didn't work out. She tells me she only talked with him of all people because I work nights and she had nobody to talk to. And he isn't always done, so you choose him. So I never tell her about the screenshots because I wanted to show her family but didn't. But flip on her about lying to me and talking to an old friend that she used to lay with. I reminded her how in the beginning of the relationship we agreed to not talk to anybody we used to like slash be with, currently talking to or wanted to talk slash be with. I told her how she's messed up big and it won't be easy to fix things. After that trust was destroyed obviously and I told her what she had to do to rebuild my trust in her. Aka show me her phone from time to time, make me feel like I'm wanted and appreciated. Which she complained about showing her phone. Fast forward the years of more ups than downs. I think things are getting better. But only because we swept things under the rug. I struggle with the fact that she still hasn't done what I asked to help me build trust in her. She constantly changed her passcode and even said at one point, what's the point of looking at my phone because I can just change the name in my phone and nobody would know. She would also say things like that she's never dated anyone under 5'11. I'm all of 5'6 and she's 5'3 and just making me feel insecure. I had many signs to just leave from her emotionally cheating, lying, being deceitful, etc. Things started spiraling and she went went out to a bar on a weekend after I brought up the same issue of wanting her to help me build trust in her since she thinks just telling me that her guy friends are just friends and I should trust her. Not realizing that her words are not enough anymore. Fast forward a couple days and she texts me saying she has something to tell me. She texts me saying she kissed someone else lately. She supposedly went to a pub and danced slash kissed some man. She pushed him away when she discovered it wasn't me. Again, another falsehood most likely. I blast her phone up trying to get her to answer, and she has the guts to text me saying she's on a call. Who the heck else is more essential to chat with than me? I email her mom that she's cheating on me as she lives with her parents still. I gave her the screenshot I obtained of her daughter informing me she cheated at the bar. My ex is furious that I'm telling her family what she's done wrong yet, she felt alright to tell her mom and sis about when we had fights sharing our business. She eventually takes up a video call and I instruct her to start chatting. She expresses how she felt lonely event though, I visited her usually every weekend, bring flowers to her work randomly, bought her lunch and travel a hour to dine with her etc. So she's not lonely. She has the pathetic expression on her face as I chew her out. I said why would she do all of this knowing I have trust difficulties and we have a long distance relationship. Why would you do such a thing? That she didn't care and just wanted to get rid of me was what I believed at the time. She just texted me on my birthday, 
but she surprised me by taking me out to supper. She said that she believed it would be beneficial. I decided to go to couples counseling. Many articles and books about interpersonal interactions have been written by me. I even volunteered to invite them to my house so that we could read together and perform the activities they mentioned together. Despite this, she refused. She claimed to have read articles, but she never showed me any of them when I inquired. In other words, it is most likely another falsehood. I began looking for therapists in the region and eventually found one close to her home. I paid for us to attend, but she only showed up for three sessions and, according to the therapist, was uninterested, she was aloof and abrasively confrontational. Despite the fact that she did not want to speak about herself, she was eager to point out your flaws. She never returned, claiming that she was upset with the sessions. After we celebrated Christmas with our family in 2020, she decided to leave since I was still looking for love. I also discovered that she had returned to the same person with whom I had caught her messaging some years before. She left via text message on January 3rd, so I guess I was weak. Fast forward a few of months of sparse messaging, since we were both finding it difficult to let go of the connection. After a couple of weeks of not speaking to her, I eventually break down and inquire as to how she is doing. She claims she will be obtaining her own place and relocating the next day. My still loving her husband suggested that I assist her with her relocation. As soon as I arrive the next day, her family is overjoyed to see me. I should have put her on the spot then and informed her family of her infidelity. Even though her mother is already aware of it and avoids bringing it up too much because it upsets my daughter and I don't want her to be angry with me. You, on the other hand, will not hold her responsible for her conduct. I assist her with her relocation and even accompany her to purchase for items for her new apartment. I attempt to chat a little bit in the hopes of getting a clear heart-to-heart sit-down. Nothing. We, on the other hand, act as if nothing has changed between us. All of her rushing about for days, trying to get her apartment in order while getting little sleep. I go even farther out of my way to compile a list of groceries, which I then purchase for her, along with food and wine to stock her refrigerator. I really want to sit down with her and speak about everything that's happened to us. I, on the other hand, allowed her to sleep. The next month, she sends me a lengthy text message explaining why we should move on and how it is best for us. Oh, and she never, ever expressed regret for anything. The only time she apologized was in her final text, which said, I recognize that I made some errors. That was the only occasion in 2.8 years that she had ever done so. She claims she's had a lengthy period of time to reflect on what we've gone through. When in reality, I was aware of her new boyfriend long before she announced it on Facebook and I was aware of her new relationship when I was assisting her with her relocation. Please accept my apologies for the lengthy rant. It still stings knowing that I went through all of this and that I really loved her. Our family were wonderful together and adored each of us individually. We seemed to be a formidable force in their eyes. Friends for life. The very first young lady I had a strong desire to marry. We chatted about anything from baby names to wedding plans to future trips and everything in between. How bizarre that you can blame me for calling you out on your BS and attempting to keep you responsible, but then go around and tell everyone that I'm insecure or controlling. Because I was a policeman, she would argue that my interrogating her was similar to an interrogation. Well, absolutely, I'm going to question you if you've lied, cheated, or been really secretive and deceptive. All I needed was for the person who claimed she loved me to genuinely mean it and to put out the effort to be honest and to correct her faults. I am well aware of my shortcomings, and I have expressed regret for the role I had in her and the therapist's treatment, but I am certain that I attempted to rectify the situation. Her mother and brother-in-law are the only ones who have seen the screenshots and are aware of the situation. As previously said, I apologize for the outburst. She moved on very quickly and has left me with the impression that she never really loved me and that everything was an act, because her family adored me. All I can think about is how much. I miss her and her family. Everything seemed to be in perfect harmony. Obviously, I'm not referring about the negative aspects. Please accept my apologies one again. I did what I believed was appropriate for a man to do, and I believed holding her responsible was appropriate. But it's as if all I did, everything I did, mean nothing. Moreover, it left me a little broken. She tossed it away and I was left to pick up the bits. Is it possible that I'm incorrect to feel this way?